Hi all, Dr. Lisa here. So I wanted to discuss an article with you today on CoQ10. If you research on Dr. Google, you'll see a lot of articles that say that CoQ10 can help fertility. And I wanted to go over some of the scientific research that tells you why that may or may not be true. The specific article that I'm um, referring to today is CoQ Enzyme 10 Supplementation Rescues Cumulus Cells Dysfunction in a Maternal Aging Model. It was published in March of 2019. And I'm going to be putting the um, uh, reference information and the link down in the description so you can access this article yourself if you want to. So the first question should be, what is CoQ10? It's basically a super antioxidant. It protects cells from damage and gives cells energy. So if you remember way back to your high school biology class, CoQ10 helps make eggs make ATP. And if you remember, ATP is the energy coin of the body. Eggs need a lot of energy. They have to grow. And then once they are actually fertilized, they need energy to power the development from the single cell into the blastocyst cell. And they also have to have all that available energy internally as they are migrating from the fertilization to the implantation site if you're getting pregnant naturally, or if you're doing IVF, basically your cells, your embryo needs to have enough energy to power its way through that five day um, fertilization or, or development process before they decide if the embryo is gonna make it or not. So any way you're doing this, whether it's naturally or whether it's through IVF, you need your embryo to have a lot of energy. ATP is the specific molecule. And the question is, what do we do in order to help your egg your embryos actually get more energy internally. So like I said, Dr. Google says CoQ10 is the answer. And the question is, does it work? The short answer is yes. Now there are a few theories about why older embryos or eggs that have, you know, are the result in, that are developing in a woman that has some sort of diagnosis don't do well. One of the um, theories is a lower energy content in the eggs and also a decreased ability for the egg to repair its DNA as um, the, um, the DNA is replicating. Um, the authors of this study that we're reviewing today have also proposed that a decline in mitochondrial function, remember mitochondria are the little, set, or, uh, the little structures in cells that help create ATP, they aren't actually doing as well as they should be. They're not creating as much energy as they should be. And that's one of the reasons that they think maybe older eggs don't do well. Now, CoQ10 is an essential component of ATP production. In a previous study, the same authors who um, did this study reported that the creation of enzymes involved in CoQ10 synthesis is reduced in eggs of older mice and older women. So in other words, that what that means is that the cells aren't actually as, your eggs aren't actually able to produce as much CoQ10 as they need. And when they treated mice and women with CoQ10, it improved the mitochondrial performance. CoQ10 helped the mitochondria, which are the little energy making structures, make more energy. And what that also did as a result was it improved ovulation and pregnancy rates in, eggs, in aged mice. Now, I wanna take a moment here and say that I am aware that we are human and not mice, but fertility results in mice apparently have a decent correspondence with what happens in humans. And you know, since it's unethical to experiment on human eggs, um, then what they do is they check out what happens in the mice first. So, take that as both an explanation and a cautionary stance that while it's not a, it's, it's, it's a potential good indicator, it's not necessarily 100% correla correlation. So the other thing that happens is that egg development also and egg quality also develop, depends on the cumulus cell function. So what a cumulus cell is, is that um, the, the egg actually has, when it, when it, 
or excuse me, the embryo, once you know the egg has been fertilized and start developing, it actually has a cell, a cloud of cells around it called the cumulus cells. And those cells are responsible for making sure that good nutrition gets to the egg. And if the cumulus cells aren't doing what they need to do, then the egg won't get, and the embryo won't get the nourishment that it needs, which means that the embryo isn't going to do as well. So one of the things that um, CoQ10 does is that older cumulus cells don't make as much CoQ10 as an embryo needs because, and, and, and CoQ10 helps reverse that issue because what happens is, is the CoQ10 helps the cells uptake glucose, which is the nutrient molecule that gives the egg energy. And that means that the cumulus cells can give the embryo what it needs. The reason I wanted to go a little bit into the physiology of this is that it's helpful to know that CoQ10 is actually doing multiple things. It's not just a one-shot deal. It's helping the egg develop energy. It's helping the cumulus cells around the egg give the egg and the embryo what it needs to develop. And that means that you're getting multiple benefits from this. So the study confirms that, yeah, CoQ10 really can help fertility. So the next question is, of course, do I, meaning you, actually need it? And the answer is, of course, as it always does, it depends. Um, if you are over 35 years, yes. We know from research that as eggs get older, they can't power the development of an embryo as well. So CoQ10 supplementation is really important for women who are older, over 35. And in addition, if you have any diagnoses that impact egg quality, such as um, PCOS or endometriosis, then you should probably also take it because anything that you can do to kind of tip the balance in helping the, your eggs and your embryos, you know, have the nutrients and the capacity that they need in order to develop is a good idea. It can't hurt, it might help. So if you Google CoQ10, heck, if you just go on Amazon and Google CoQ10, um, you'll see page after page after page after page of supplements. And that begs the question, is all Q CoQ10 created equal? And the answer in this particular case is an absolute no. You get what you pay for when it comes to CoQ10. As it turns out, it's really difficult to get the CoQ10 molecule uh, through the digestive system and across the digestive barrier and into the egg cells where we want it to go. CoQ10 is a relatively um, um, fragile molecule. So the more expensive versions of CoQ10, and you need to do your research because, you know, more expensive doesn't necessarily mean higher quality. What you're looking for is um, manufacturers that actually can tell you what the uptake rate of their CoQ10 is, because then we know that they've done the research that says, yes, we can guarantee that you're going to get a decent amount across the barrier. Um, so what you want to look into is the manufacturers that have a high quality uptake rate. Now, the one that I stock in my online store comes from Designs for Health, and they actually reformulated that at the end of 2019 so that they were able to increase the amount of uptake of the CoQ10 and um, you know, added um, certain other supplemental nutrients in there that just really helps the whole thing function better. And there are other companies that, you know, produce really good CoQ10. So what I want you to do if you go shopping is check and make sure that you actually look at the manufacturer's website and, make, and, and confirm that they have tested how well your body will absorb and uptake the CoQ10 to make sure that you're getting what you pay for. In this particular case, quality matters and cheap is not better. What I'd like you to do, if you enjoyed this video, is check out my other videos. You can find me online at fertilityresetonline.com. Um, I'm also on Facebook under the same name at fertilityresetonline.com. And I'm at Instagram um, or on Instagram at acupuncturelisaomd. Good night and have a great day.